either. So this is um, my uncle's Piper Light Ultralight airplane. And I mean, just check this this beast out. I mean, look at this. It has pilots in the front. Actually, two of them. I think that's really cool. And I mean, look at all these things he made it out from. Aluminum pipes, carbon rods, just like really high quality materials. And this is the motor. Um, currently, right now, we don't have the receiver in right now. So some of these wires are, you know, kind of dangling out. But we're going to fix that. And so this is where the uh, battery goes right here. And just look at those details on this, on these uh, pilots here. Um, when actually controlling the actual um, airplane, it actually moves uh, the hands, head. I mean, you can hear the gears in it. It's pretty cool. And if you see back here, there's this little tiny wheel that has suspension. So when it lands, it's it's gonna have a nice soft landing, and it's just a okay, really so cool model. I love the it so uh, Quicksilver Ultralight. I was currently getting some tools to uh, fix this model. Okay. So we got a little bind plug. This is called the bind plug. For those of you that don't know this, many people already know that in the hobby, but many of you have never seen this before. This is a little bind plug. And this you use on the battery channel source section of the receiver. And what that does is it allows you to, allows this to talk to the transmitter. So we put the bind plug and then we connect power, make sure the plus and the minus are correct here because this is a three lead plug here, typically on these receivers, but I'm using I'm using this battery to power this up because I don't have an ESC connected. So there we go. So once, the, once that's on, on, the, on this, on the selection of the airplane, you go here and you have to tell it to bind it to that receiver. Now we have to select the proper pr protocol. This is called the protocol. So the protocol of that of that is uh, the SM2. Let's try that one. That's okay. It's telling me that I use that in, in some other. Okay. There we go. Okay. And that one that one bound to that. See? Mm -hmm. and, off, and then and then it's there we go. Now that now it's solid. So we should be able to, to move a lot of these controls here. Okay, so the elevator is working right, the rudder is working right, so we got those controls set up properly. The ailerons is working. One aileron is working, but this one is not working here because we don't have that connected. Now I need a white cable to do my aileron, so I left that out. But we are going to connect the little pad here for the pilot as well. We'll just connect it to a spare channel here. Let me just go to my auxiliary channel or maybe the, we'll use the rudder channel here since we already tested the rudder. And we know that's working. We'll just connect it to the rudder just to mimic the head or to make sure that that's working. There we go. I uh, see that is the gear. So one of these connectors, hopefully one of these switches is the gear. There we go. How cool is that? It's a three position switch. So the beauty about this radio is that I can use, see how this moves like in, in, th in three stages? Boom, boom, boom. Okay, yeah. I can make this connection more fluid if I connect it to one of these potentiometers. So this radio has a lot, a lot of features here. We have these potentiometers here on the side. We have this that we can program to do that type of movement so it's a little more fluid or just have this connected in with a wire harness or wire cable in unison with the aileron or the rudder. So when you, when you operate the rudder, the head also moves, moves with, along with that. Follow what I'm saying? But for now, you know, we're just testing to make sure that these, these things are operable. So that's operable, okay? So that, that servo works. Now let's test this steering here. So let me connect the steering servo. And that should also operate the steering. And there we go. So same switch. That's the steering. Now we have to adjust this a little bit better because it's obviously this this is not that. So we have to make adjustments here and basically I have to reposition this so this more vertical and the wheels a little more straight. But basically that, that is linked with the rudder. So this and the rudder operates at the same time. So when the rudder 
kicks, kicks one way, the wheel should kick the other way so that to effect left and right turns coordinated with the rudder. So that's how that works. So we got the, uh, so yeah, that's, uh, that's, those are the controls for this, uh, for this system in a very basic form because we are just testing the servos right now. So we're gonna have to um, uh, reconnect, make, make, make all the connections again with, uh, with the proper uh, white harnesses so that the ailerons work in unison, like I said. Uh, and everything is set up before we go fly it, but pretty much that's how all these connections are done with the receiver and it's already linked to the radio, so we, we show that. So yeah, this is the MIA Quicksilver style RC ultralight that my nephew uh, was talking about. So you want to put in your more, your comments, Gio, on this? I mean, what do you, what do you yeah, think? Yeah, it's awesome. I love it. Tell me what you like about it. Be honest about it. You know, from, from your perspective, it's, it's from your young perspective age. It's real, I mean, like... In comparison to the Piper Light that you did a video a little while ago, what, what do you think it's... What do you, what do you like about this one? What do you think it's different? When, what, what do you think? Uh, do you like better this one, or do you like the other one better, and why? I mean, for all of them, they're really realistic, and uh, can you give those... The controls? Yeah. That's so cool. I love that. Those are the real surfaces uh, to control that. So this is, that's the control. This one doesn't have a, uh, a little wheel at the back because this has a tail guard. So this part right here is made out of nylon. This little green, green part right here. And I tend to supply these with the color scheme of the aircraft. So if you get a black one, you probably get a black nylon tail guard piece here. And this, is, this will wear out eventually because this drags on the ground. Yeah. But it's a, it's a piece that this design is a nylon uh, insert that you can replace it in case it wears out you know, to a point where you can't use it. But nylon wears out very tough. So you'll probably have this forever. Um, so that's the, the purpose of that. And that's why this doesn't have a wheel. It could have a wheel, but the original design of the um, Quicksilver Ultralight does not have any wheels at the back. You could put a wheel because all the wheels are down at the front. And once the model gets the battery at the front, it sits level like this, so it doesn't tail drag. Yeah. So this is not a tail dragger. You know, this is a tri tricycle uh, landing gear type of aircraft. Tricycle meaning that it uh, it has tricycle, you know, tri tri gears three. So that this is a tri gear. The pilot here needs. Uh, I need to finish the the arms. You've seen the the the, the, the hands arms and, and legs, and yeah. the feet on the other one. So I need to add that to to this one here. So that's what my nephew was saying. Uh, this is in the works right now because we're still working on the pilot. So we're gonna finish that before we go flying. So he looks the part. But um, you know the head moves very, very much, in the, very similar to the other ones that I've done in past years, except that this one is a little more, more spiffier because uh, uh, it has, uh, you know, it's done in green, and I went a little more elaborate on the flight suit. Um, so there's a. Let me connect that if you want to move the, the head. It was a little hard to get into there. Okay. Check that out. So if we want to make it more fluid, I can connect it to another channel here. Let me let me connect it to the to the to the rudder channel. So as you you, you can connect this in with a Y harness. So the Y harness is just a, a, a cable that allows you to split the channel signal into more than one servo so that you can operate with one signal you can operate both ch both uh, servos so see this is more a little more fluid see how the pilot is moving perfect or you can have this automatically if you have like a little circuit that automatically turns this left and right but i typically connect this one with my rudder and I put a, a delay circuit but this radio can do delays here within, within the, the the programming of the radio you can set up your uh, your head movement to the, the servo the connection to your radio if you have a, an eight channel radio this is a six channel radio by the way so but if you have eight channels you can connect the head separately to a separate channel and you can program that connection to that channel that operates the head so that you can operate it uh, with a delay so that when you're moving the the, the rudder, in this case, you know, I'm moving the elevator here, of course it's connected in the elevator channel. But if I'm moving the rudder, it'll, it'll be more smooth. 
so it'll look the part. So when you're turning to the left, he'll look to the left. When you're turning to the right, he'll look to the right. When he's moved to the head to the left, you know, he's, he'll be turning to the left. So it's, it's coordinated. So you can coordinate all these connections and all these uh, uh, controls in your uh, TX-16, which is a very nice radio. I mean, there's a lot of people that have bought this radio. Uh, and the, one of the reasons I bought it, because you know, one radio does pretty much all the controls that, that you, you can have any model you want uh, with these, uh, all these multiple protocols, because you can have a, you know, um, um, you can have a DSMX, DSM2, you can have a, uh, this is Spectrum uh, uh, technology, you can have uh, FR Sky, etc. You know, you guys that have been doing this for a while know what I'm talking about, but this is just for my nephew's uh, sake. So that's how this is controlled. I don't have the speed controller connected on purpose because this is a serious uh, motor and I don't, I don't want to risk any, anyone getting hurt here. That's the reason why I don't, I don't have this connected and why I'm using a separate battery here to provide 5 volts to the receiver. Otherwise, this speed controller has, a, has via this cable, when you connect it to the receiver, has what is called battery eliminator circuitry, which supplies 5 volts to the receiver. So there's no need to employ a secondary battery just for the receiver but you could also do that I mean in the old days we used to do that the receiver had its own battery and then the rest because it was gas operated you know you operated just uh, regularly but yeah this is the uh, this is the MIA in this particular color scheme um, and so uh, so yeah any any final words to you yeah um awesome I love it Pretty cool and like as I said, real, re really realistic. Cause the head is turning in. Yeah, the, the head is up. Yeah, the head is up. Really smooth. And, and that's and just just simply the head. Now, if we connect this over here with a link to this control here, you know, like I have on my other ones. Yeah. You know, the the move the movement of the hand can also be mimicked. See that? And mm -hmm. he's doing that. He can pull back. He can pull forward. And all you need is little links. But of course, I need the hands. I need to connect the hands. So we'll do that next, you know. But just to get it flying, I think uh, it's it's ready. We can just finish the uh, control, so we can go fly tomorrow to uh, have it uh, do its uh, maiden flight. Awesome.